Hello there, and welcome to part 3 of the Sailing Developer Blog. I'm your host Gnome, and today you'll be diving into the rewards from the sailing skill should it pass the final lock and pull. If you haven't already, go check out part 1, Navigation, where we cover what it looks like to be on and sail your ship, as well as part 2 on Gameplay, discussing how the skill is structured and what activities will be on offer. But let's focus on rewards. What do players get from training sailing? How will the skill integrate and work with your other, currently existing skills? And what purpose does sailing serve? As a skill, sailing should feature both a satisfying internal progression scheme while interconnecting with and supporting other skills. With the ability to access and traverse the entire ocean, we'll be able to explore a huge design space for rewards to fulfill these requirements. This design space is broken down into two categories. Points of interest, which are in-world features made available at the right level, quest, or facility requirements, and activity-specific rewards, whose rewards depend on the sailing activity you're doing. Do you know that many of the rewards mentioned here won't be discussed in deep detail and should be treated as examples rather than definitive release-ready content? Specific items and stats will be looked into more fully with the community if formal development proceeds. But let's start with points of interest. Sailing is all about discovery, discovering untamed islands, harvesting and utilizing new resources, crossing paths with lost peoples and cultures, and slaying exotic monsters. All of these can be found at points of interest, which include any feature accessible by sea, from whirling maelstroms, to colorful coral reefs, to new volcanic islands. There's no limit to what a point of interest might look like, so each should give a different experience and therefore offer unique, tailor-made rewards. An example of a potential point of interest is the Great Conch, a hidden island inhabited by turtle folk, a humanoid turtle people. To unlock it, you'll need 36 sailing to get a special port task to investigate a shipwreck near Corsair Cove, only to find Flupa, one of the turtle folk who's injured. Helping her in her quest to return home and restore her village unlocks the Great Conch as a new explorable area, where you'll find new resources like rosewood trees, which are used to upgrade your ship's mast and hull, the griffin as a new slayer monster, and the ability to learn a novel, engaging fletching technique from the turtle folk that provides a bow fletching alternative to spamming darts. But of course, this is only one possible example of a new island. Ideally, sailing should come with a collection of points of interest that are mixed from small to large and simple to complex, but the focus of development will be on launching a full skill while leaving plenty of room for growth in the future. The old school team would also like to open the conversation about soft locking certain points of interest, letting you access them by joining another player's ship, or buying new teleport jewelry from a player who's already unlocked that place, as opposed to hard locking all of Sailing's content behind getting the requirements yourself. It could offer a nice avenue of emergent gameplay that introduces new economic opportunities and promotes player interactivity for those less interested in training the skill. Before we move on to activity-specific rewards, let's quickly discuss what new resources you'll find both at points of interest and directly from sailing activities. A reminder that it's still quite early to know all the final rewards and the specifics of what they do, as these tend to change frequently during full development. Rest assured that whatever makes it to release day will have been thoroughly discussed and voted through by the community. To break it down, skills include both internal rewards that progress the skill itself, and external rewards that affect other parts of the game. For sailing, such external rewards include precious gems like agate, garnet, and aquamarine for crafting new jewelry, haddock, blue tang, and sunfish for use as hunter bait and as cookable food, and elkhorn, pillar, and umbral coral for new potions, ammunition, and armor. And for internal rewards, we have new wood types like larch, cedar, and rosewood for using construction to upgrade your mast and hull and build various ship facilities. New fibers like hemp and cotton to craft better sails, metals like lead and cobalt to build cannons and weighted dredging nets using smithing and crafting. This highlights how sailing doesn't just provide new items, but retroactively provides value to many of our current skills that have fallen into disuse or lost their profitability over time. It'll open up avenues for unique raw resources to exploit with gathering skills like fishing, mining, and farming, which can then lead to production skills finding greater purpose as well. Smithing will see heavy use in creating cannons and cannonballs, crafting will help with making stronger sails, trawler nets, and dredge nets, and construction will be used to build your ship in most facilities, while simultaneously helping to sink many current items like logs, planks, and bars. 
For players who aren't too adept in these skills, ports will feature NPC shipbuilders who can construct low to mid-level ships and facilities for you if you provide the raw materials. While many of these resources will be accessed at points of interest from having the right skill, quest, or facility requirements, some may only be available from specific sailing activities. So let's walk through some of the activities outlined in the core gameplay blog and discuss what they'll offer. Shipwreck Salvaging will give a wide variety of current and new resources, including rarer salvage like armor pieces, gems, or legendary treasures. Port tasks will grant payment in the form of GP, exotic resources, and trade secrets from local dock workers for constructing better facilities like a larger cargo hold. Barracuda Trials will feature milestone unlocks for beating the champion of each trial, like the schematics from Mako's Sail, which removes the speed penalty for sailing against the wind. Charting the Sea, being a completion-style activity, will primarily focus on cosmetic rewards, like a new POH style, for fully mapping each area. And naval combat will come with the broadest array of rewards depending on the monster you're killing, similar to traditional combat. Pirate ships will drop loot that can quickly be turned to gold, alongside higher weapon facility tiers, while sea monsters drop more natural resources, like hides, fangs, and scales for better ship upgrades, weapons, and armor. Turning to secondary activities, we have deep sea trawling, which provides access to new fish types, Mineral dredging, which gives lead and cobalt ores alongside regular ores, with a rare chance for other valuable treasures. Sea monster hunting will focus on giving you new, powerful uniques alongside named ship components, offering legendary drops to match the legendary status of the monster you hunt. And finally, coral farming gives access to coral jewelry for teleporting to ports and new islands, coral armor with special stat bonuses while at sea, and coral potions that boost your sailing level or increase the chance of hauling in rare dredging materials. Finally, let's quickly retread some of the progression schemes we discussed last time with ship customization. Ship upgrades are improvements to the integral parts of your vessel, including tiers of hull for better health and defense and the ability to pass over dangerous reefs, sails which increase your speed and can handle stormy zones, and rudders for increasing your boat's turning speed. Ship facilities, like cooking stations, salvaging hooks, and dredge nets, will also have their own upgrade tables. Let's use the cannon facility as an example of these. Cannons, alongside ballistae and rams, are the weapons of naval combat. They are short range but deal high damage, and come in three categories. Regular ranged cannons, magic cannons, and dragonfire cannons. There will also be new smithable cannonballs from steel to dragon, which will only be usable from your ship. Finally, NPC crewmates will be available to help manage ship facilities that you aren't attending to. Some of these will be new faces recruited from port pubs or after beating them in a trial, while others may be characters you're already familiar with and have completed a quest for. The final piece of reward space involves where your ship is at any given time. Your boat will normally remain where you last left it, whether you've stored it at a port or teleported away from it while at sea. While each port will offer a ship retrieval service for quick access to your vessel, the magic skill also offers a few alternatives, like teleport to ship, taking you to your vessel, teleport ship to me, which brings your ship to the nearest port, and ship in a bottle, an enchanted item which allows you to carry your boat in your inventory and transport it wherever you go. And with that, we're brought to the end of part 3 of the Sailing Developer blog. If you still have questions about Sailing's rewards, go check out the full blog in the description. Otherwise, be sure to join us next time in part 4, Lower and Integration, where we discuss how sailing will fit narratively into the world of Gilanor.